To that. Yeah, that's an interesting topic. George Hamilton IV carried the demo of Roses Are Red, the Bobby Benton hit. He, George Hamilton IV carried the demo around his briefcase for a year, trying to decide whether to record the song. Has that happened to you guys? Turned down big songs? No, never happened to me. I, I never turned, I didn't turn the song with that down, but I recorded a song that uh, was written for me by uh, my keyboard player at the time, Johnny Stevenson. It was a song... Uh, that we recorded, put out as a single, didn't do anything. Six months later, the Righteous Brothers got back together and decided to put it out as a single. It was called Rock and Roll Heaven, and it went to number one. Sold over a million copies. You said to yourself, what are, what are we doing wrong? We did something wrong. What about you, Dennis? Uh, we turned down Candida, <laughs> which is a real big song for, for uh, Tony Orlando and Don. You never know. It's always a roll you know. of the dice. Right. Gary, apparently, who, who was picking your songs? Uh, it was it was my producer, Snuff Garrett. Oh, I know Snuffy. He's yeah. crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He um, he he picked all the material, selected all everything that uh, that we did, and he not only had the ability to pick hits, but he knew when to put them out too. He, he I thought he was great. Later he went on. I guess this was before he worked with Clint Eastwood. Yeah, he and Clint right. Eastwood uh, formed a uh, record company together. And right, so forth. right. And and Snuff uh, did the. Um, the title theme to Bronco Billy, I believe. Right. I think so. Gary, was your was your father instrumental in? Uh, did he did he play any any role in your singing career? Um, the only the only thing he helped us with was the very first Ed, Ed Sullivan show. Um, we we auditioned at Disneyland in California to play all summer long, and I didn't want to drop any names or anything. I just wanted to see if we could make it on our own merits and everything, and and we did get booked for the job summer of 64 in Disneyland all summer, and that's where Snuff Garrett saw us. Dude, did, did you work the telethon? Yeah, we have worked the telethon before, not last year, the I year mean, before that. No, I mean, did you work the telethon back when you had the Playboys? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, two or three different times, I think. I'm not sure exactly what year, but yeah, we did. You got any brothers and sisters? I've got five brothers, all younger. Six so, boys in the family. It's a big family. Yeah, yeah. And I have a daughter. Broke broke the ice there. Had a girl, and she's twenty now. Now you guys. She's twenty now. <laughs> twenty. Why? Why did now? Why did this? 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 <laughs> I heard all these oohs and ahs I, out here. I know. I did. I look like you, I look funny. funny. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> You can't believe a guy that looks this young could have a daughter that's 20, right? Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. 
I want to tell you, we have makeup geniuses on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I recently had the pleasure to uh, work with our next guest. We were on the SS Norway. And uh, I, I, I think he does a marvelous act. He's been on this show before. He's one of my favorite comedians who appears on this show. And uh, I want you to welcome him back, Dan Riley. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Listen, Dan Riley's going to be out here in a minute, but right now I'd like to spend some time with you. I'm your nostalgia DJ, Rob Noxious. How you doing? Good to be here. Hey, we're going to take a little trip through the 60s right now. Put your retro spectacles on, okay? We're going to go back to that time when our phonograph needles went from Elvis to the Beatles. But first, what would the 60s have been without the 50s? Well, they'd have been 10 years early for one thing. Isn't that right? Huh, huh. Okay. Yeah. The band liked that one. At any rate, folks, we're going to talk about the 50s and great people back then like Pat Boone, who, of course, was a smart man and used rock and roll as a springboard to an RV show on the Nashville Network. <laughs> and, of course, man, that's, those were the days when Dick Clark looked, uh, well, just like he does today. Anyway, we had a lot of great music back then in the 50s. But then the 60s came along, and we had... Oh, I want to tell you what I was doing back in the 50s. I was a DJ on the only radio station in my town. I was the only DJ. We only had one record player, but that was okay, because we only had one record. Uh, unfortunately, it skipped, but I've still got it here today. It's Smoke Gets In Your Eyes by the Platters. Let's hear it. They ask me how I knew my true love Ooh, I just couldn't lay through it in your eyes <laughs> uh, Back in character. We're going to go back right now to 1962. And Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, a big hit called Sherry. Everybody. Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons from the 60s. Funny thing about Frankie Valley. Oh, thank you so much. I agree with you. I do. I really do. Funny thing about Frankie Valley, nobody ever listened to the man before he stepped on that rake. Okay. It would be... It would be very foolish, of course, to talk about the 1960s without mentioning the Beatles. So, there you go. The Beatles. Okay. A little bit later on, the Beatles got kind of weird and started listening to the Maharishi and all that stuff, and all rock and roll started getting weird. We had people like, uh, well, even here in Nashville, we had some uh, psychobilly groups that were around, like uh, Led Stetson did uh, Stairway to Texas, I believe, was a big hit for them. Of course, it was based on that hit by Led Zeppelin called Whole Lot of Love. I happen to have that right here, Whole Lot of Love. Can you turn up the guitar, please? Thank you. supposed to be a freak out that's enough of that okay led zeppelin hey we had a good time with them didn't we just about covers all of rock and roll music there, you know? But I would like to bring out a star of today. I'd like to bring out a guy named Dan Riley. He's got a new lyric to a song called Aquarius. Big hit back in the 60s, if you remember anything at all from that era. Back in the 60s, this song was a hit, but now Dan has put a new lyric to it, 
and it is about Nancy and Ronald Reagan and how they met. Here we go. When her moon was in the seventh house And Hollywood was lined with stars Then Nancy Davis, she met Ronnie In one of those rich and famous bars She said, I love you because you're an Aquaria Cool and gregaria Someone to marry her. Hey, I'll make all the big decisions. No more chimps or televisions. I got presidential visions guided by the constellations. Mystic Frisco revelations. We'll survive those publications. Aquaria. with Aquarius. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you. Hi, Dan. Hey. Uh-oh, look at the guitar. The guitar is the guitar. Thank you, guitar. Isn't Dan Riley great? Let's hear it for Dan Riley. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to do a little bit of a song you did on the boat. Uh, Dan, Dan wrote uh, a little... Unrehearsed? Huh? <laughs> unrehearsed. The, la the, the last night performers were performing on the boat. It was Friday night. Because the next day we were all off the boat. Uh -huh. And he and so he said good uh, goodbye to all the passengers with a, a little song about the Norway. The well, Norway. Sing a little bit of that, would you? I'll try. The SS Norway. This, this was a lyric that I wrote just for that occasion. I'm sorry. Was it fun? <laughs> And now Miami's near And so we face our debarkation My friends, I'll say it clear I hope to clear that extra case Through immigration I planned, I took each chartered trip Something like that, I've been through each and every doorway just trying to find my way around the ss norway how have you been i've been fine thank you very much i enjoyed uh, being on the cruise with you this guy can uh, shoot some mean buckets i want you to know we were at the foul shooting competition, and uh, I think we were both eliminated in the first yes, round, weren't yes, we? Yes, we were. <laughs> <laughs> How's your Uncle Porky? Uncle Porky, I, I just gave him a call last week, and uh, he's, he's, Uncle Porky has a tendency to exaggerate and brag, you know, and uh, he talks like this, so don't be upset if I uh, mention, but I asked him what he's been doing. He's been out of work, and he said he found a job. It's a great job, Dan. He said, yeah. I'm involved in the pressurized proliferation of petroleum products. And I said, no kidding. How long have you been pumping gas, Uncle Porky? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say proliferation. He said uh, that he was a little bit sad that day because, uh, in his words, he said, uh, Aunt Porky. We call her Aunt Porky because really, except for the clothes, they look the same. You know, that's it. He said, Aunt Porky uh, fell out of the car today. And I said, well, that's terrible. And he said, yeah, it is. I got a ticket for littering. <laughs> nice guy. Uncle Porky's a nice guy. <laughs> Let me take a break. You've been watching Dan Riley. We'll be right back. <laughs> Lou Christie, if your ears are burning, we were talking about you. Lou Christie, who was, we were talking about uh, our, we did a show in the, at the Grand Cayman Island. Lou Christie was on down there with us. Gosh, he, he can sing higher in a hawk's nest. Okay. Sonny, are you up? Okay. Was this your hit? 
This is a good song. Here's Sonny Garacy to sing Precious and Few. <laughs> Okay, there you have them all in a row, folks. Hi, <laughs> uh, Gary Lewis, where are you appearing? When? Where? Well, wait, would you like to read hey. the monitor? Oh, May 27th, 28th, and 29th in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Okay, now is that is... I assume that and that is just you without these guys. That's, that's just me. I, well, not just me. It's myself, Del Shannon, and uh, Mamas and the Papas. Okay. Do you, uh, you still have a group that simulates the, the sounds of the Playboys? Yes, yes. These are the Playboys right over there. Oh, the, the, the band the over band, here? band, okay. that's the Playboys. Right? All right, now, uh, Dennis, this this uh, tour that all of you collectively are going on, where where will you be this year? We're going to be, uh, uh, we'll be in, uh, in the Midwest uh, quite a bit. We'll be doing some dates in Canada. Alaska. Uh, Alaska, we're doing, there we go. Doing the Alaska State Fair in September. We're doing approximately somewhere between, I'd say, 50 and 65 days between now and the end of September. So what, what is the tour called? Does it, have a, does it have a name? It's called the Super Rock of the 60s Tour. Super Rock of the 60s Tour. Correct. So watch for it. All right, kid, where are you working? You back on the boat? Well, I had some dates, but I'm going to cancel and go with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be uh, in Modesto, California tomorrow, a, a private uh, party for some people there. I'll be well, Lake... we can't go to that, so I guess we well, can just cancel it. Well, you can come. You can come. Lake Tahoe, uh, May 31st through June 5th with the judge at Harris, and uh, I'll be back in the SS Norway June 11th through the 18th. Okay, what, what kind of week are they having? They have, they have these... Uh... Yeah, they have these theme weeks on the Norway. Oh, on the Norway? Yeah. I think uh, I haven't the foggiest idea. It's, uh, Enzo Stuarti is going to be the uh, uh, one of the featured uh, singers. So I think it's probably a, a week featuring people whose first names begin with E. Hi. Okay. I don't know how I got into it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. I like oh, did you ever get, did you ever find the answer. car you were looking for? 
Oh, the car? Yeah. I bought an American car. It was, uh, uh, I finally, I bought a Chevy Celebrity, and I found out why they call it the Celebrity, because the computer voice in it is a celebrity. It's Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I got in, I said, hey, one at a time on the driver's seat, huh? Take it easy, pal, okay? <laughs> There's a Johnny Cash model, too. Oh, is there? Says, look out, I hear a train coming. <laughs> uh, how do you turn an everyday dish into something special? Try a little real cheese. It's so... Okay, back to 1965, and Gary Lewis again. And count me in. a guy in your band named John Schott? Joe Schott. Joe Schott. Yes, the drummer. The drummer. Who else is in your band? Um, Rich Spina on keyboard, John Dean on bass, and Billy Sullivan on guitar. And then we still be on your tour. Yes. Okay. Let me uh, say this. Tomorrow night, if you're watching this show, and if you aren't, shame on you. Tomorrow night, Charlie Pride will be here. Oh... From Lexington, Kentucky, we will have Exile, Judy Rodman, Cousin Manny Pearl, and Shotgun Red, all tomorrow night. So we hope you'll be watching. Now, tonight, let's applaud Mr. Gary Lewis right here. Sonny Gerasi. Dennis Yost. Always last in the telephone book, aren't you, Dennis? Billy J. Creamer. Billy, nice to see you. And our crazy friend from down in Orlando, Florida, Dan Riley. Dangerous Dan. Thank you. Mr. Whitehurst is out back taking a smoke, so I guess these guys are going to play us off. Thank you for watching. Good night. Let's go, gentlemen. <laughs> Into a treasure chest of classic westerns with the king of the cowboys.